Well, we'll continue on a sermon series from the book of Daniel. Remember, for the last two Sundays, you know, we have learned about, you know, uh, how Daniel and three other Hebrew youth, uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and they were taken captivity in Babylon, and there they faced great obstacles and challenges in their lives, but yet they chose to follow God, and they become leaders. And I think those stories are wonderful, and it can apply to all of us. We can, you know, uh, put those stories, uh, apply that to stories into our own lives, because you and I, we too face obstacles and challenges in our lives. And Daniel and three of these young Hebrew youth, they set a great example for us. You know, how to follow God and remain faithful to Him um, in the midst of these uh, challenging circumstances. Well, uh, if you remember, for the last two Sundays, two uh, weekends, you know, we mostly talked about some godly things, some godly, godly things from Daniel, Hananiah, you know, Mishael, and Azariah. But, you know, I think, you know, it's also valuable if we spend some time looking at some ungodly, ungodly things, you know, because, you know, we, you know, make, we learn from other people's mistakes and so that we don't want to make the same mistake. So I think it's very valuable. I think it's good for us to learn other people's mistakes because we don't want to make the same mistakes. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, learning from the mistakes. Well, uh, I have a question for you. All right, so can you think of a, the, biggest, the biggest mistake you have ever made? the worst choice you've ever made, or the poorest decisions you ever made. Think about it. What would that be? And then I want you to share that the biggest make with the person sitting next to you. Don't do that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> well, well um, we don't, the, the reason that we don't want to share the biggest mistake, the worst choice that we ever made because we don't want to look bad. We don't want to look bad in front of other people, right? Just don't share that with other people. Just keep it to yourself, all right? Keep it to yourself. Um, if you remember, the last two Sundays, we have learned about this King Nebuchadnezzar. He built a huge, tall, you know, golden statue about 90 feet and 9 feet wide. Nine, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. It's a huge one. You, you could see from miles away. And, you know, the king, actually, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, commanded when the music, the musical instruments played, everyone, they had to bow down and worship. You know, so here comes the music. Here comes the music. And the whole nation, the entire nation, they bow down and before this golden statue, except these three young Hebrew youth, Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah, they refused, you know, this king's decree to bow down and worship, you know, um, uh, worship this golden statue. Somehow, king heard about it, and he became furious, very angry. He brought them before him and said, well, if you serve and worship my God, then I'll give you a second chance. All right? When the musical instrument played, 
And if you bow down and worship the golden statue of myself, if you do that, then that's good. But if you don't, I'm going to throw you guys into this blazing furnace. And who will risk, who will save you from it? And I said, uh, last, last Sunday, I really loved their response. They said, well, God is able to rescue us from the majesty's hand. Yes, God is able. But even if he doesn't, we will not still worship other gods. No, no way. And, you know, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, became more angry, furious. Okay, you know, that's enough. You know, uh, make sure this, you know, burning furnace, this blazing furnace, seven times hotter and throw them into this burning furnace. And what happened? A little while later, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar went and they saw, he saw this, you know, one more person in this blazing furnace. And the scripture says, it looks like the Son of God. Son of God was there and protecting you know, these, these three young Hebrew men, and they come out, and no one was hurt, no one was burned, no one was smelled like a smoke, right? So the king actually made a decree. King made a decree in chapter 3, verse 28 and 29. This is what king said. Praise be to God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, who has sent his angels and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be you know, be turned into pieces, uh, piles of the rubble. For no other God can save in this way. So, you would think, you would think after this encounter, after this experience, the king Nebuchadnezzar become a follower of God. What do you think? Wouldn't you think after this king Nebuchadnezzar saw, you know, this fourth person in burning you know, a furnace, and nobody come out with hurt. Nobody smell like, uh, you know, smoke. Wouldn't you think the king Nebuchadnezzar would become a follower of God after this experience? Because we all say, seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. But you know what? That's not the case of the king Nebuchadnezzar. You know, what the king, the king Nebuchadnezzar does was he actually, you know, um, he actually takes this Hebrew God and then puts in the bookshelf with other gods that he worshiped. That's exactly what's going on. And now we come to, you know, Daniel chapter 4. All right, we come to Daniel chapter 4. I'm going to be reading uh, verses 1 through 3, all right? It says, The king Nebuchadnezzar to the nations and the people of every language who live in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. How great are His signs and how mighty His wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generations to generation. So this is where we've been looking at the book of Daniel. So this part, chapter 4, actually, who is writing? Who is writing it? By, you know, reading, by listening to, you know, this scripture, who's writing it? It's not Daniel, actually, who's writing chapter 4, but it's the, you know, that, uh, it's the king Nebuchadnezzar. It's the king Nebuchadnezzar who is beginning to tell other people what God has done in my life. You know, this is the mystery that God has revealed to me about himself. So you see, chapter 1, 2, 3, king, uh, Daniel is, is writing it, but then king, chapter 4, we could tell it's the 
king is sharing a, his testimony. Did you, did you ever get to hear somebody's testimony? I'm pretty sure you have. You know, I have, I've heard so many testimonies from uh, people as I was growing up. But, you know, always, you know, they're talking about before and after. Before they, you know, uh, met Jesus, they were like a prodigal sons, rebellious. They were, they turned their backs on God and they persecuted their, you know, family members. But then after they encounter God, they are totally different person. You know, they, they are changed. They're transformed. They're ready to follow God before and after. That's how usually, you know, testimony goes. So the chapter 4, if you read it, a lot of it, you know, um, it's the testimony of the king Nebuchadnezzar. So if you, if you look at verses 4 through 7, you know, uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar is talking about his dreams. He had a lot of dreams. And these dreams have been bothering him all the time. You know, if you, we didn't, we didn't cover it, chapter 2, but uh, in chapter 2, he had a, already had a bad dream. And then in today's scripture, in chapter 4, he had another bad dream. Well, um, if you read, if you read chapter 2 and chapter 3, and chapter 4, you know, if you read chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4, you, you and I, we begin to see the mistakes, the mistakes of the king Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, you know, God had rebuilt himself to the king Nebuchadnezzar, you know, several different times. Remember chapter 2, you know, through the dreams, the prophecies of the future, through the Daniel, God has rebuilt himself. And what about chapter 3? We just talked about last Sunday. God rebuilds himself to the King Nebuchadnezzar with young three Hebrew you know, youth, right? Hananiah and Mishael, Azariah. And one more person that King Nebuchadnezzar saw in this blazing furnace. What about, but, but yet, you know, what does he do? What does he do in today's scripture? Verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 4. Um, it says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home in my places, contented and prosperous. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home in my place, contented and prosperous. What is he doing? He's chilling. He's thinking about his prosperity. He's think thinking about his wealth. Anywhere, nowhere we could find he's seeking after God. I mean, you know, after encountering number of this, you know, uh, encountering God through the dreams, you know, through, the, through this, you know, um, blazing furniture, for, uh, blazing furnace experience, we can't see anywhere he's seeking after God. He's just thinking about you know, his prosperity and, you know, wealth, right? That's the first mistake. First mistake that I see. And then, you know, second mistake I see here, you know, he goes to the wrong people. He goes to the wrong people for the right, you know, advices. Remember, when king in today's scripture had a second bad dream, what does he do? He called all the wise men of the Babylon, astrologers and magicians and, you know, uh, diviners, and ask for their advices. But you know what? He already had this experience in chapter 2. You know, um, chapter 2, he called out those um, astro astrologers and magicians and diviners, you know, for their advices. But then, this is what Daniel said in chapter 2. Um, um, no wise man, enchanters, magician, or divine diviners can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mystery. King Nebuchadnezzar, they can help. They can help you. But there's only God who can help you. But yet, this king 
keeps going back to them again and again and again and again. Let me ask you a question. So, how often do you go to the uh, people, wrong people, and to the wrong place to ease your troubled mind? How, how often do you go to the wrong, wrong people and wrong places to ease your troubled mind? For example, you know, when you, uh, when you have a problem, when you, are tr- when you have a trouble with your boss, your boss is mean. Or maybe you have a bad relationship with your co-workers. So um, who do you turn to? I mean, where do you go and ask for the advice? Think about it. When you have a uh, bad relationship with your spouse, broken relationship with your children or with your parents, who do you turn to? Where do you go and ask for advice? Do you go to, you know, um, bar and just get drunk and drunk? Or do you go to somebody, you know, uh, whose life is more, more messed, up, messed up than you? Think about it. To me, I don't know about you, to me, I'm so fortunate. I'm so thankful that I have a lot of you know, good people around me and give me the right advices. You know, uh, I have, whenever I have uh, uh, questions in ministry and little you know, conflicts and problems I have, uh, not, not often, but maybe once a year, every other, every other year, I, go, I have a, my mentor. I have a mentor that I can go and get some advice. And I also have a great, you know, staff and also great church leaders in this church, you know, um, and I, I can go and get their advices. And of course, I have a, my wife. My wife, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, I, uh, I ask, I go to my wife and ask for advices. I can tell that she's a lot wiser. She's full of wisdom. You know, me, I'm very reactive, but my wife is proactive. You know, um, I have to respond right away. You know, I have to show my temper and anger. But then my wife said, chill, chill it, man. Come down, all right? Okay, um, take a minute, all right? Just uh, how about you spend the night and think about it. And then how about you respond next day? She helps me. Uh, and um, helps, me, help, helps me through some difficult situations. So it is very important, brothers and sisters, to have somebody, you know, we could go and ask for advice. Do you have one? Just like Daniel? I hope you do. So when your life is in trouble, you could always go and go and ask for the right uh, advices. Well, you know, as I said, as I said in the beginning, you know, we learn from other people's makes mistakes so that we don't want to make the same mistakes. God has rebuilt so many times in our lives. And I hope and pray that you've all encountered, you know, God's presence and, you know, continue to seeking after God and continue to you know uh, find somebody that you could turn to and ask for their advice and guidance I hope and pray that God will bless you on this on that area let us pray God we thank you so much for the great opportunity to learn from this book of Daniel Yes, we too face obstacles and challenges uh, in our lives, but, you know, we we learn that, you know, you are in control and they and help and you ask us to remain faithful to you. We learn today the mistakes of the King Nebuchadnezzar. Lord, you have rebuilt to us so many times. Lord, help us to seeking after you all the time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.